here we are. It's May and I thought I would share the projects that I worked on back in April. So if you remember from my previous work in progress video, I mentioned that I had a couple of projects I was looking forward to working on. I will say I'm still working on the socks, but so we won't share that and we won't talk about that today. But instead we will talk about the completed projects that I finished because I cannot wait to share them ever since I finished them. I was like, oh, I'm burning to show all of you what I had worked on. So the first project that I completed in April was the bookends. Now, if you remember from my previous video and have seen that, you know, a little bit more and you've seen them not painted, I will put a picture here on the screen so you can see what they looked like before. So a quick backstory, again, I purchased them. I found them from Goodwill and I thought, no vents to white on white and more white. I just really wanted to customize them and bring new life to them so that they could have fun on my bookshelf and I could be inspired seeing them. And I will now show you the progress footage of how they were transformed. So as you see here, I decided to take to Instagram to hear from all of you any preferences that you had for these bookends. For house number one, I came up with two combinations, which everyone said yes to combination one, which I preferred anyway, so I was excited to agree with all of you on that color choice. Now for the second house, it was actually 50-50, which was okay. I guess both the color combinations are kind of a love-hate color combinations. And so I ended up having to break the tie with my family, but then they created an additional tie. And so I ended up just making a decision, which you'll see very shortly um, at the end. But I guess I'll just spoil it for you. I chose combination one. I ended up also creating a third story to select what my subject matter was going to be and unanimously everyone was like, let's do floral. So I thought, you know what, let's do it. It's springtime, why not? Okay, so as you can see here, I started with house number one. I decided to start with this one because I was most excited about this color combination and I just went right to it, getting it painted on there. Now I decided not to prime because I figured it was already white. Yes, you can come at me in the comments section. This is off white, it's not pure crisp white, so it will affect some of the color perception. But I decided to just take the chance, just dive right on in and get going. Okay, so as you can see here, I did a second coat just to really solidify the color red on this house. And as you can see, I just jumped right on in and painted it again because with the acrylic, it dried really fast, which was great because then I was able to kind of work quickly and get those colors in there. Okay, I have to just say the elephant in the room. Yes, you can see Polar Seltzer in the corner. I am not sponsored. I repeat, I am not sponsored by Polar Seltzer. I just happened to be drinking it when I was working on this project. So just as a disclaimer, I am not sponsored by them. But they have delicious beverages, I will say that. Now in the second section that you're seeing, I actually decided to prime for the pink flowers because I really wanted the pink to really stand out and really be the true pink color. So in this case, I approved of using some kind of white acrylic paint to prime for the flower locations and I really just freehanded them. Um, I kind of anticipated what kind of flower I wanted to draw and then I just took to it and just kind of went at it just with my paintbrush and hoped for the best, <laughs> which it worked out pretty well. So here's to winging it, I guess.
I did, I have to admit, I did find that I had to do a second coat of the pink just to really make sure that it was nice and opaque and fully pink. As you can see here, I am actually went back in with the red paint and add a little bit of interest into the flowers, add a little additional color, so I thought I would bring back in the red. And if you look, the red looks just a little bit different because it's on pink. I did that on purpose just to give it a little more dif difference from the main color of the house. It's subtle, but it does allow it to not bleed into the background as much as a result. And that's why I did that. So as you just saw, I added the center of the flowers to give it more definition. And now I am painting the windows dark just to try to give more of a three dimensional feel to this house. Now I have to admit it was really hard to paint it and I did my best. I still think I could have done better and I may end up changing it from the black because the more that I look at it on my shelf now is it just looks a little too stark. So we'll see down the line if I revise that and paint something within it, maybe some curtains, we don't know. But at this point I thought I would at least do the dark because then it gives a little bit of that depth that a house would actually have. So I took a look at this and I decided, you know what, I need even more definition on these flowers. So I found a Sharpie black pen that I had, not like the markers, but like their pen series. And I decided to just go for it and draw right on the acrylic and make it happen and to give that beautiful definition and pop to the flowers, which you'll see here. And I also traced the inner flower piece and I put a little black dot on the flower center. Upon further review, I decided to thicken the line and add a little bit more of a stylistic flair to the line around it. So I darkened the pieces on the petals to be a little bit thicker just to give it that next level. So I just wanted to also mention I painted the inside red to match to give it a three dimensional quality when you look at it on the bookshelf, as well as added some grass, added a pathway, and I painted the L shape, if you will, uh, black just to let that kind of blend into the background. And I repeated this process for the second house as well in the other color combination. So here they are. Do we love them? I do for sure. I mean, they're going to be on my bookshelf. <laughs> so 
I'll give that quick three-dimensional tour of their completion. Here it is. And now I can put my pens and pencils into them and my post-its, the little gifts that I've been getting from the Ultimate Reading Challenge. So here. And as mentioned, I kept these unfinished just because I hadn't decided if I wanted to paint them or not. And I was worried about the humidity chipping off the paint and getting on my books. And so I just left this because it was finished um, just as white for now. But I may do a different color. No offense to the black, but I'm kind of thinking that I might, at least for this vertical piece, do another color. But yeah, here it is in its glory so you can see it up close okay and then here is the second one so you can see that and it's kind of weird that there's no front door to this so i'm not exactly sure how you get into this storage or other house i guess it's a mystery we all like good mysteries don't we here. It's so bright that the camera doesn't know what to do with it. So, but here they are. I enjoyed doing it. What did I think? I wish I had bought more. <laughs> I didn't, I went back to Goodwill and I didn't see them anymore. So I'm still going to keep my eyes out for them. Um, I'm hoping that I can do at least one more set because I just love how cute they are. And I would do the cool toned colors if I can find them again. Um, for sure. So I'm going to keep my eyes out at Goodwill, but here they are. And I guess let's inaugurate them. I did pre-inaugurate them earlier, but let's do that again so you can see them. So there they are. They now live here and they'll be here so that we can all enjoy them in future videos. So, and I can look at them while I'm working in this office slash storage space. <laughs> So a little fun, a little whimsy for the bookshelf. All right, so the next project, the inspiration for this project was that, you know, returning back to work, returning back to cubicle, desk space, whatever that might be. And I was like, you know, it's time to spruce it up and do something new now that we're back. You know, it's a new chapter. It's 2022. Let's do something different. I wanted to spruce up my space with fake plants, specifically cactuses, as you can see in this photo. If I have not mentioned this before, I am a huge fan, and I have been since my childhood, of succulents and cactuses, especially cactuses. I had a first couple plants that were cactuses, and I loved how they would just have this little bloom that would pop up during the summertime. Usually they were fuchsia, at least that's the variety that I ended up always choosing. <laughs> I just fell in love with them, and so I thought, you know, in the office space, why not have a little plant life? But I knew that I didn't have the direct sunlight or great amenities for real plants. Now there's probably other people who have done real plants. I decided to opt for the fake variety uh, just for practicality purposes at this time. I hope one day I could do real ones, but just because, you know, I didn't want to abandon my babies over the weekend <laughs> on the desk, so I figured you know, we'll just do fake, it will be okay, and we'll find a way to customize. And so I decided that I would paint the pots of these fake plants. And now I will roll the footage for what I did. All right, so I just broke out the blue. I thought I would mix in a darker blue as the base because I decided to go with a blue on blue, as I may have mentioned. And I actually pre-taped some texture on to these pots using my washi tape because I wanted to create some textural finish on the actual pots. And so I thought I would do that as well as create locations so that I can use that a brighter blue on top in those areas just to give it a little extra something something. Uh, just because I felt like if I just done one color, basic color is just not that exciting. 
And I, there's something about, for me, seeing like a painting where there's these different levels of texture and things beyond it that give it that that richness, that next level. And even though these are just pots that are going on my office desk, I just really wanted a little bit of visual interest so that throughout the day I could glance at them and be inspired to do more work, I guess. <laughs> So here they are, woohoo! So I'll give you a quick tour of each one. So as you can see, as I mentioned before about the technique and the process and inspiration, I think they turned out pretty well. Now you can see a little bit of that texture that I was talking about here. So I chose to opt for that as I mentioned. And so I'll also say that I love these little fig flowers that were attached to these cactuses. And now we have a little bit of blue to complement the colors of the fake flowers. Here is the second one, as you can see. I'll give you a quick tour of them. So from far away, it kind of gives a slight blue, but up close, you can start seeing a little bit of that texture there. Here's that one, orange flowers. It's funny because this reminds me of cute little buns on the head. <laughs> so <laughs> this cactus is styling. <laughs> and then here's the third one, as we can see, finished product. I just thought blue was just a perfect color for complementing these warm tones. And I didn't want to take away from the fake flowers, but there we are. I finished them and so now they're ready to go and live and adorn my office space. All right, so final thoughts. What did I think of all these projects? Well, I enjoyed doing them. I think they were great for doing just small, simple little projects um, and really just upcycling them. If that's the right term, that might be more extreme but at least giving them new life, customizing them in a way that inspires me to do work, to enjoy life, to be creative. And that's what I loved about just finding these little projects. And I challenge you too as well, to look for little projects and little moments like this and to find ways to customize different items and to see that potential when you're looking for items, whether it be in a thrift store or in the actual store itself to, find ways to really think and rethink about things. And I would even say if you have old things that you've had around for a long time, think about, you know, in what way can you actually give new life to it, whether it be, you know, repainting it or finding a new use or a new reconstruction of it. And even sometimes you just donate it so that other people can find that as well. But I hope that you found this video inspiring and that you also go out and find those little 
moments of inspiration and I hope that they inspire you to do wonderful and great things. So I hope that you have a wonderful day. Happy crafting, happy reading, happy writing, and happy everything. And I'll see you in the next video or I'll see you in the next live stream. Bye.